I put myself between the charging ogre and our wizard and raise my shield to deflect his blow. All right, that sounds like defy danger to me. Roll plus strength. Well, that's a four. Good news, mark XP. Bad news, the heavy blow tosses you about 20 feet into a pile of what looks like vines. As you land, the vines begin to move around you. Oh, wait, what? I want to discern realities. Okay, got an eight. That means one question, right? Uh, What's about to happen? Uh, As the tendrils begin to make noise and move closer to your friend, it becomes apparent. He's about to listen to that D&D podcast. Supervisor, fuck you! We're going back to HR. It's like, whatever, I'm right, crunchies. So I don't have to listen to you. We got our recording started. Thank you, everybody, for downloading this latest episode of that D&D podcast. On the last session with uh, the cave crew, as I guess we call them since they went through a cave, the party was interacting with the people of Bend first. Uh, to varying degrees of success. <laughs> Uh, Vela, the daughter of the once human, then Wendigo, now dead uh, person, was given her father's journal along with some keepsakes, and the Grey Render, Felix, joined her, uh, leaving the party uh, after their noble sacrifice. Uh, Sam and Oric got some new gear, and uh, Zarko made a guy afraid of a door. Uh, then stole one of his goats, punched it a few times, broke its neck, and then stabbed himself in the hand out of anger. He gave me the goat. Sort of. <laughs> oh, mercy. The party discussed some business dealings with the mayor, uh, Elder Wells is his name. Elder is his title, not his, his name, just FYI. Uh, and Oric discussed some possible business dealings with a man named Jock. A sad, out-of-work man looking for work uh, who said he would be willing to come with the party on their adventures. Uh, Shortly before we ended, uh, after Zarko stabbed his hand, he lost consciousness in the snow next to a broke-neck-ass goat next to a cliff in an un... uh, like a snowed-over part of town. So that'll be interesting. I guess before we get to the actual playing stuff, let's go around and introduce ourselves. My name is Chris. I am the GM. Uh, I would have been playing a goat, but I'll just have to wing it. (laughs) Hey, I'm David, and I started my recording late, so good good luck syncing this up. (laughs) Uh, I'm Renee, and I am playing Sam, who may or may not have wandered into dark magic arrow cellars. Hi, I'm Adam, playing Oric, the relatively normal one here right now. <laughs> right? Zarko. Yes. Why don't you roll me D6? A D6, okay. A D6. A five. You're dead. <laughs> five was for your dead. Uh, the higher he rolled, the better the result would be, actually. Oh, good. On a one or two, the farmer would have found you. (laughs) (laughs) You awaken, and you are colder than you've ever felt before in your life. Like, cold to the very core of your being. Uh, But there's a small halfling man shaking you. And he says, Mister, are you alright? You look like shit. I'm pretty sure you're not alright. Can you get up? Can you move? (laughs) Oh! Mm. Mm. Ugh. Zarko looks at his hand. (laughs) Yeah, your hand looks pretty bad. Um, I tried to patch it up. Um, I put some ointment on it. It may hurt for a while, and it may turn a funny color, but it'll be fine, I promise. Just leave the bandage on for a few days. Um, yeah, it's fine. Who? What's, what's your name? I'm Jock. Jock? Jock. Jock. It's not important right now. You're probably dying of cold. So, can you get up? Uh, Zarko tries to stand up. You are shaky on your feet, but you are able to stand up. Ugh. 
Uh, and as you're trying to steady yourself, you feel uh, a hand on your shoulder kind of giving you some support. Much too high up to be from a halfling. I look. There's nobody there. There's just an indentation of a handprint on your uh, your shoulder where you feel it. I, I put my other hand there, like, sort of to put on top of that invisible hand and, like, pat it reassuringly. And I'm going to look at the halfling and go, Did you find a goat with me? Uh, yeah, there was... I, I was bringing it back to the stables, uh, and some farmer guy was looking for it, and I told him I didn't know where it came from, because I figured that was probably for the best right now. So he brought it back inside, and he seems really angry. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, Zarko, you took eight damage at the end of that last session from the blood leaving you. Uh, the first aid has given you uh, four health back. Okay. But your hand's a bit shaky, uh, so you're going to take a negative one uh, for the next day to cast any spells. Okay. Uh, so he's like, so you came with uh, with Auric and, and his, his friends, right? You are one of Auric's friends? I mean? Yes. Yes, okay. yes I am. Uh, I think y'all, you're all staying at the inn, so we should probably get you back there quickly and without detection, or things may be bad for you. What? Because I think you, what? I think you killed that guy's goat. I, I was given that goat. Okay, regardless, there was a dead goat next to your body, and your hand was cut, and there's, some people have weird things about magic, and kind of goats are one of those, uh... What do you call them? Um, stereotypes? What he's saying is, this is a super conservative town, and they don't take any of this magic <laughs> business. <laughs> Sacrifice and pentagrams. Some people are untrusting of magic, and <laughs> dead goats are usually associated with the bad kind. So we should get you indoors. And also, there's the part about you freezing to death. So can we talk about this inside? Yes, sure. I... Please don't tell Mr. Oric I was giving you lip. I don't want to get fired. I'm sorry. Don't think you need to worry about Oric. Okay, good. Uh, anyway, so can you can walk. We're, we're good. I can. Can you follow me? Yeah. You... <clears throat> so he's going to lead you back towards the inn, where Zia will see that you are kind of effed up, and will have you brought to your room and not have anybody interrupt you for the rest of the night. I'll ask her to like bring me some food. She says, of course. And you know that's still going to be on your... your, your you're going to have to pay for that, right? Sure. Whatever. We'll worry about that in the morning. Just... Yes. A uh, little while later, a scantily clad elf comes by with a steaming bowl of what looks like pureed sausages. <laughs> he says, it'll make you feel better. I love say, the fact that all the scantily clad elves in this story are men. I, I'm just going to say, do you usually dress that way at this time of year? I'm from the north. It's very cold there. Don't. Yes. <laughs> I'm an ice elf. We're used to this. It's fine. Look, you're hurt. Drink your sausage and go to sleep. <laughs> <sighs> Zarko will drink his sausage. <laughs> <laughs> are you writing that all down longhand or something no I, I was taking notes and then I wrote drink your sausage and go to sleep that's got to go on the quote board <laughs> Oric and Sam uh, as you're wandering your way over to what you assume is some sort of side quest board you hear some commotion and a farmer comes to the center area of town uh, sort of uh, in the middle area between the inn, the tavern, and the market area, with a dead goat in his hands, and he is just shouting up a storm. Oh no! And he says, "That absolute bastard cursed my house, and he took my goat, and then he killed it." Ah, uh, Sam rolls her eyes. Uh, there are people gathering around, and they seem confused and. They are also growing angry by whatever the hell this weird goat killing house person situation is. Um, Oric, I think we probably need to take care of the situation because I strongly feel that we know the person responsible for this. Yes. 
It's a good thing you guys aren't still wandering around with that giant monster, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll walk up to the farmer and, uh, you know, quietly up next to him and just kind of say, uh, why don't we go talk somewhere more quiet? We will help you deal with the situation. But we don't really want to get the whole town involved in this right now. You affiliated with that that nefarious Diablo? Whatever his name is? Completely irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> I am affiliated with the illustrious Machismo. And uh, we will be willing to take care of this problem for you. It is, after all, what we do. You're going to be hard-pressed to make this right. What can we do to help you out? We'll see. He is willing... Uh, you guys want to... You said you want to lead him out of the main area? Yeah, somewhere, you know, quieter. Okay. You can head further north towards the, to the entrance to the town if you want. That's You can head to his house. Uh, you can bring him to your room at the inn. You can get a table at the tavern. It's really um, your call. Is he carrying the goat around still? Yes. He's still <laughs> carrying a dead goat. Probably not in the tavern. Unless he wants to sell the goat to the tavern for some sausage. <laughs> uh, probably back to his house I guess would be the best idea you all follow him to his house most of the way there this place begins to look familiar since you know it's right near the stables you guys were at earlier today um, whether or not you choose to make mention of that is totally up to you but you get to the front porch for his house and he lovingly places the goat down next to the door and he, he sits down on the ground and he just starts moaning into his hands it's like she was one of my prize milkers. Oh, God. <laughs> Farmers. <sighs> Sam's just going to kind of... Not, I, I don't know. Is there like a fence or is there steps, right? Is there like a railing in the steps? Is it a porch? Yeah, there's... Yeah, we'll, we'll say it's got a railing around it. There's two or three steps leading up to it. He's uh, sitting down, sort of leaned up against the, the wall of the house next to the front door. Okay, uh, so Sam will stand like on the bottom step and kind of lean against the railing and just let him moan about the prize milker for a minute. Uh, say, I, I understand that this uh, has not been the best day for you. Um, is What can we do to help make this day better? Uh, you could, an eye for an eye, you can kill a man who done it. I, I feel that killing a man is, is kind of a steep price for a goat, even a prize milking goat. Lurleen was like family to me. I, I understand. Perhaps we can uh, replace your goat with another goat. You, you know, goat tree around here, we own all the goats in town. And you can't buy one of my goats and give it to me. Well, we could, but that might not solve your problem. We'd be back where we started from, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Yes, you, you do Sorry. make a logical point. Uh, is there something else that would ease your... <coughs> 60 coin. That is a very expensive goat. Hell, it's enough to buy 10 goats, but... Do we still have that necklace? Don't we have the necklace? Mm -hmm. You do. How about... Fuck, I don't even know how many coins I have. How many coins do I have? <laughs> I'm not prepared for this bartering business. That is not on my sheet. We gotta keep better track of coins. Uh, I think you guys got what? It was like 50 to come here. And so you probably started with like, I don't know, let's say like 80. And then you spent five on the arrows. So okay. just mark down 75 tentatively for now. Cause okay. I, don't I need a different. Know. See, my problem is that like the only character sheet that I've used is the Obsidian Portal one. Yeah. But it's a pain in the ass to edit. So. I haven't done the coin bit, so I need to do a different thing there. Your best bet may be whenever you get access to a, a quick and handy printer, just print one out and just take notes right. on there and yeah. update the Obsidian right. Portal okay. whenever. But it's not going to do you any good right now. No, no, no. Okay, so uh, how about we say 20 coin and this lovely necklace that would make a wonderful gift for your beloved? He looks at it and says, oh, Lurleen would love this. Much better than a goat. That'll do. All right, then. Hopefully your day will proceed without any more curses and or crazy goat-killing men. 
You keep that evil man away from me, and I'll say this is all some sort of bad joke. Excellent. I will do my best to uphold that side of our bargain. I see him again. We're having problem. I understand you, sir. He comes near my daughter again. I'm going to try to kill him. He will not. I can assure you. Okay. Now y'all get. Immediately. <laughs> Scooter. <laughs> it's where the necklaces live. Get you one. <laughs> Okay. Oric and Sam, <laughs> as you guys are walking away, I, I assume you're heading back towards the general market area, or is there somewhere else y'all wanted to go? Probably we should head back towards the general market area so that we can figure out uh, what's up with the wizard and keep him away from the goat farmer. <laughs> okay. Uh, you hear a whistle from one of the little side streets, and it is a small halfling man, and he's motioning for you guys to come to him. Right. Okay. He says, uh, hey boss, uh, so, uh, I don't know if you heard, uh, your, your pointy hat friend, he did some things, uh, I'm not gonna go into it, he did some things, uh, I, tr I tried to clear him up as best I could. We, we've heard about some of the things. Okay, he's at the inn right now, he's, he's resting, uh, I, I patched him up as best I could, um, he was missing a lot of blood, I don't know why, I'm not gonna ask why, there's some things, uh, he's sleeping, uh, I, th I think... I don't know. Either He's either eating or sleeping or doing some stuff. Anyway, he's at the inn. He'll probably be sleeping a lot until he gets all of his blood back. So that's, I just wanted to tell you that. I wanted to catch you before, you know, an angry mob uh, caught him or anything. Indeed. Thank you. Right. Uh, is there anything you need me to do? Did you find that alchemist? Uh, I found someone with materials that would do the trick, but they would be cheaper than the refined stuff. Okay. Same boom, slightly more smell, but less coin. That's fine. He said for for 10 coin, he can sell you the containers and supplies to make th three friends, let's say. <laughs> and he kind of looks around as he's he's talking. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have this, you know, if, if you give me the... Yeah, oh yeah. Go I would talk. Yeah, yeah. Provide him the coin to buy the uh, materials. I figure you guys are... In an interesting position at this point, so I'd, I'd rather you not be involved with this. I see. So, when are we heading out? Just curious, because things are getting sour. <sighs> Hopefully tomorrow, early. Okay, great. Well, I will go do this, and I will make sure that I have my, uh, my bag packed, and that I have my friends with me and ready to go. Excellent. I will see you in the morning. Oh, uh, can I have some coin to buy a bag? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Thanks. A little backpack would be like two or three coins. Okay. So you guys are now left in uh, a side street by yourselves. Uh, anything you want to do? Uh, I need to stop by the mayor's office real quick. Just let him know to get his guys together and then head back to the inn. Sure. Quick stop in. The mayor is there. Uh, seems to be putting on his some different sleeping clothes. And he says, yes, yes, very good. I'll have them meet you at the, the northern exit of town in the morning. Okay. Have you any idea what's been going on in town? I've heard some tales. Nothing that hasn't been taken care of already. He cocks his eyebrow a little bit and he says, very well. This is nothing that will harm any future relations with your town, is it? I certainly hope not. Let's hope for both of our sakes that it isn't. Have a good night. To you too. You guys return back to the inn where Zia says uh, upon you you guys walking in that she's received some deliveries for you. Okay. I will take possession of those. It's a large-ish crate. Inside there are... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hold on. I wrote it down. Except I don't remember where I wrote it down. 16 days worth of rations. That's eight days for both of the people she met. And uh, you have uh, six bottles of wine. It is the Drunken Hawk Special Reserve. I really want that now. I want to own a bottle of wine that says that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I don't even like wine. I just want to know what the logo for it would be. Is it just like a bird and it's all kind of stupid drawn and it's got little bubbles above his head? Because that'd be adorable. Right. Also, there's no like adhesive for labels, so this is mostly like painted on, and then somebody um, painted over the paint. So that's how the thing works. Anyway, yeah, it is a picture of a bird, and it's got little bubbles above its head <laughs> to signify drunkenness. 
I feel like that works. Uh, Google image search has let me down. Apparently, a lot of sushi. <laughs> Which I don't even know how the fuck that turns to sushi, but whatever. It might be a name of a specific type of sushi. That's true. Uh, Zarko, in your brief fits of consciousness um, while your body's trying to replenish all your blood, any special activities you want to do? Any random feverish mumblings or um, meditations or thoughts? Um, can I try to discern realities? Sure. What are you trying to discern? To try and figure out what exactly happened. When? In the, the snow? Yeah. With the whole ritual and everything. Why don't you roll me a cast a spell check instead? And you can kind of do like uh, an arcane CSI thing to figure out what the fuck just happened. Okay. So I guess it's a 2d6. But yeah, okay. Eight. An eight. So, um... You can ask me one question. Off that list? Or... Uh, just give me like a somewhat specific question you want answered. Not like what happened, but... You know, where did the blood go? Or, are we good? Or, can I have fries now? Will the servant work as before? Is the, is the one question I'll ask, I guess. You have a very definite idea in your head that the contract has been reestablished and will continue... Like, it it will function as it did before. Okay. The, the contract is, is valid again. All right. Zarko has his own idea that maybe he... He doesn't want to use the contract as cavalier as he did before. But. Put your hand in this meat grinder, just because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, anything else you want to do, or is that... Well, that's the one question I get answered, so... True. All right, so... Everybody sleepy sleeps? Oh, no, not yet. No? Okay, what you no. got? Uh, I'm going into Zarko's room. Okay. And he owes us, so we'll just not wake him up about it. And uh, borrows coin purse. Sure. Why don't you roll me a... I forget exactly what the move is called, but you know what the move is. for Tricks of the trade. That's the one. An 11. An 11. Oh, I guess technically it's... No, no, that's 11. Yeah, that's right. On a 10 plus, you do it, no problem. So, you get his coin purse. Are you going to just take a few coins out while you're there? Are you going to take the whole thing with you? What's the plan here? No, I'll take what what's owed and return his purse to him. Okay. I think it was like three or four coins or something like that. Oh, and it's also 20 for the goat for uh, Sam. Oh, right, right. So as you're rooting around, uh, <laughs> at, the first thing that you feel when you put your hand in there is a neatly rolled piece of paper that's tied with a string. I am curious. Does your curiosity get the best of you? I think it has to, yes. Yes. Okay. Open it. Sam doesn't even know you're doing that. Until <laughs> open it. Are you going to open it in the room with Zarko, or are you going to take that with you? I'll return it to him later. I'm sure it's not that important. Uh, so you put the, the coin pouch back. You get the rolled piece of paper. The 20, let's say 20, 23 coins. Okay. Uh, David, make sure to mark the 23 off of your inventory. <laughs> Noted. Thank you. <laughs> and do you want to go and hand Sam her coins or read the note first, or what do you want to do? I'll drop the coins off with Sam. Sam, you have coins now. Nice. Sam is very impressed with that entire maneuver. What maneuver? <laughs> We're just asking Zarko for that. cooler than she thought. Oric, uh, note, you want to read this in private or with Sam there? Um, just in case it's dangerous, I'll do it without Sam. I'll do it in private <laughs> because you never know. You get to the room, sit down on the comfy bed, you unroll it. It's actually addressed to you. <laughs> nice. It says, Oric... Remember, you promised to tell me everything. Yes, yes. Wow. Uh, is there anything else you want to do, either of you, before uh, the morning comes? Uh, no, I'm happy to go to bed now. Make sure anybody who took damage, you regain uh, up to half your max health in HP over the course of the night since you get to rest. Um, in the morning, you, you come to the main lobby area. Oh, I'll, I also wanted to split up and give everybody one unit of rations which is five days and one weight okay so i guess you got like three and a partial thing of rations from the lady because you got 16 yeah the last one we can just split up for breakfast this morning or something or zarko in the morning uh, as you're waking up your hand you notice it's not shaking as badly anymore uh, 
uh, you look down at it, and where whatever the hell ointment the jock put on there, you have a weird Shrek green band on your hand. But hmm. the skin seems to be healed. Uh, the muscles aren't super tender anymore, and you have relatively good control. So uh, you're not taking that negative one anymore to casting your magic. Okay, cool. And uh, waiting for you guys in the lobby, whenever you do all filter down to the lobby, is Zia, who, uh, while she understands she's not getting money from you, is patiently waiting to get her keys back whenever you guys are leaving, which her husband tells her is today. (laughs) And uh, you also have Jock, who is proudly sporting a fancy new backpack uh, that he is handling very carefully. There are also... Uh, nine people in the inn waiting for you. Or the in the tavern, sorry. Uh, according to what Jock tells you. Huh. Uh, Sam is going to leave all of those extra people and Zia to the rest of the party and go collect her dog. Okay. Max is, of course, happy to be rejoined with you. Uh, he does seem a little bit sad now that Felix is gone, but oh. he'll probably get over. Poor baby. We'll have to find him another monster. <laughs> <laughs> so Zarko, in the morning, is going to check his coin purse and sees that the note is missing, along with a number of coins. The number isn't important, though. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when he when he sees Oric in the morning, he's just going to like give him a look that's saying, like, you know, like, you owe me an explanation sort of look. Yeah. <clears throat> jingle, jingle, jingle. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys want to stop at the tavern for food, or are you just going to roll on out? Well, Zarko loves having breakfast before adventure. So. Okay, Zarko, you head over to the tavern. Uh, Sam Oric. Um, I'll I'll go to the tavern, but more to meet with the leader of the party that we're going with. Sure. Um, I'll go eat something and get some bacony treat for Max, who lost his monster friend. Okay. Bacon <laughs> you know, sausage. You gotta make those kinds of things up for your up up to him. A barmaid wearing pretty fancy clothes for somebody working at a tavern walks up and uh, asks you if you guys would like food and drink or just food or just drink or well, I guess a combination is the first thing I said so, uh, what'll it be? Oh, I'll get just get a small breakfast. Give me a big meal, please. Alright, we need one chest plane special. <laughs> and it's just sausage with some fried sausage and then like sausage shavings on top and they're all different kinds of sausage. And it's on a big hearty piece of bread that has sausage in it, and there's a big fried egg on top. That with the drink is three coin, and Sam, you can get a small breakfast, and uh, they put some bacon on there, so uh, you can just give that to to Max if you want. That'll be one coin. That works for Sam. And Oric, while they are busy putting food into their respective face holes, uh, there is a group of nine people, or ten now that uh, Jock has met back up with them, and they've got several tables pulled together, and they're taking up pretty much one entire wall of this place. Okay, I just want to meet with the, I'll call him captain of this group, and kind of give him a heads up of our last foray into the Undertrail, uh, what we encountered, and what we're planning on removing. Three people stand up when you ask for who the leader is. Uh, There's two who are wearing much lighter traveling clothes. They have some bundles of paper, some pieces of charcoal, I guess, for writing and drawing. And there's one guy who seems to be wearing some guard armor. All right. Well, I will address the layout to the people taking notes, the cartographers, and the tactical situation to the guard. (laughs) That sounds reasonable enough, I suppose. Forget, how much detail did we have about the lake monster? Do we know what it was called and all that? I believe Zarko knew what it was called. Yeah. He, he did a he did a spout lore or something on it. Uh, so he knew about it and some, you know, basic facts about the creature. No, like, weaknesses or anything, but these things are gross. They got big teeth. They got tentacles. They got eye stalks. They live in water, dirty water. Don't get in the dirty water. Uh, Zarko, are you going to share that info with the gathered group? Oh, yeah, sure. Say that for later. Okay. All right, so there's a little bit of a worried look on his face when you tell him what it is and 
how big it is. And he's like, well, we've never had to defend the town from anything like that, so this will be something new. <sighs> I hope we're getting hazard pay. I, I, I believe I have a plan to either seriously hurt this monster before it even comes into contact with us, or at least drive it out of its natural element. That sounds preferable. Yeah, there's not much we can do against it while it's still in that water, but I believe I have the means to drive it from its uh, lair. Okay. Well, would you like to share that plan, or will we just find out when we get there? Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with a substance called flash powder, but it is it is a, a, a nasty substance, and... I plan to use it, hopefully to scare or drive the monster out of the water. Oh, I suppose that would definitely do the trick. Just make sure you don't bring the whole place down around us. No, I, I, I believe if I detonate it close to the water, it shouldn't cause any damage to the surrounding. You're the, you're the adventurer. I'm just, uh, that's the first thing that came to my mind. So certainly, I just certainly. wanted to make it known. Uh, I'm hopefully going for more for loud noise and rather than destructive power. Sure. So are we all ready to leave, or is there anything else we needed to do while we're here? Uh, my men and I, uh, men and women, sorry, and he, you know, he apologizes to a few people in the, the group. He says, uh, my teams are ready to move. Uh, as long as you're geared up, we're good to go. Very well. Uh, did anybody of the party want to do anything before you left? Sam's ready to be not in this town. Okay, fair enough. I'm just going to assume that I spent whatever it is. Um, what? I, I, I want to make sure I was making sure I had rations for Jock as well. Oh, I should yeah. Be okay. So uh, for the four of you, it'd be eight days. So you need thirty-two between the lot of you. And I still apparently had twenty, or I have twenty right now. So I should have for two of us. Okay, so let's say by the time you guys get back, you'll probably be running pretty low, but you should be okay. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. All right. So without much fanfare, uh, you all and your three groups of townspeople head on back towards the caves, which you just love so much, I'm sure. I, I forget, did you say that uh, Jock acquired the raw supplies or the combined final product? Uh, he got the stuff that you would need to mix to make it, okay. but he was given instructions on how to make it, so you guys are fine. Yeah, I guess as part of my budding alchemist properties here, I'd like to sort of work with that before I make it. Sure. Yeah, I know I know sort of alchemist properties you got budding in your hot house. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. They're legal in the town that they were acquired in. So they've got you some... Uh, there's some manure... You've got a little bit of sulfur from who knows where, uh, and you've got the, the saltpeter and all the other crap you need to make the gunpowder. Uh, so it's it's definitely smellier than you're used to for any kind of flash powder you've encountered, mm -hmm. but uh, a few tests with a little bit of extra you have, it definitely seems to have the same effect. Okay. Uh, not quite as much of a flash, but still a enough of a boom. Uh, so after a good half day of wandering, not wandering, you, know, you guys know where you're going. After about a half day of walking, you make it to the cave entrance that you used as the under trails exit when you came to bend first uh, the town guard contingent tells the two sets of scouts to you know get behind them and if things get bad to run for the exit so one team gets out their papers and they start making detailed notes as you guys walk in and after just a little while you guys are all back inside anybody in particular want to take lead or anything you guys want to do I will go first. Uh, out of curiosity, what sort of gear do the, do the combatants have? Uh, they seem to be armed with uh, swords of varying lengths. There's uh, two guys with a short sword and like a buckler of some sort. And there's one guy with a uh, like a two-handed, I guess, bastard sword, whatever you call it. And he also has uh, a crossbow on his back. Oh, um, what did we do with Felix? Felix stayed with the girl. Okay. The vineyard I girl. wasn't I wasn't sure if he was cool with that or yes. Yeah, he uh he went over with Vela. Okay, awesome. Well, I mean, one less problem for us, so Yeah, I figured feeding him on the way would not be easy. 
if you guys decided to keep him, he was going to eat like three or four rations a day, depending <laughs> on how lucky you were. Uh, so just as a talking to the group here, um, my idea was to craft uh, these explosives and toss them sort of in the far side of the lake to drive the creature out and post most likely towards us uh, and set up an ambush in the crystal room. So people that have any kind of range capabilities could be up on the, the higher ground and we could have our more skilled fighters down below. Uh, presuming that it can get through the doorway. I, I don't know how wide these tunnels were, but, I mean, Felix was running through them, and I'm assuming he's of a similar size. So, yeah, that that was my initial thought, was to sort of get him out of the water and somewhere that we can actually fight with him. So we could have, like, uh, Sam and Zarko up on the ledge waiting and... Maybe the crossbow guy, depending on what he feels like his capabilities are. Maybe it's just a single shot and run in with his sword. But then everyone else, all the, the melee fighters down below in the crystal cave. That way we have plenty of light, room to maneuver, and he's not in the water. Does that sound reasonable? Or does anyone else have any other ideas? That sounds reasonable. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, we can take the group in and show them what we have or what we found and get set up. The scouts are all taking furious notes about the twists and turns, and uh, there are a few with uh, bits of cloth with different measurements written on them, and they're holding it out to make sure that it's wide enough for the standard cart to fit through, or, uh, you know, for two to fit through in some spots in case uh, you need, you know, Passing. right of way yeah. and that sort of stuff. Uh, so they're working out some calculations. Uh, the other scribes stay behind with them as well. The guards come up with you. Uh, they take their spot in the, the crystal room. He said, Zarko and Sam up here. Yeah, to start off with, makes sense. So yeah, if, if there's anybody who opposes to that plan or being moved there, just let me know. I'm just kind of plopping everybody based on that idea. Let me plop down a couple guard tokens. Wow, these already have the blood splatter all around them. That's fantastic. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're big. Yeah, the scale is relative. Uh, so, Oric, when this time for the bomb comes, are you going to go up there yourself and try to lure this thing, or what's the plan with that? Yep, I'm going to make the, the suicide run. Okay. Well, that sounds fun. Hopefully being the, the nimblest will help. Everybody there, they understand what the plan is. Uh, Sam and Zarko, what are you guys going to do while this whole thing's going down? Yeah, we've got the plan in place. I will just wait expectantly to shoot at it with arrows. It's so it's like <laughs> running past us. This was a really thin little yeah, that... uh, area that nothing big could reach in. Like you okay. guys had to walk sideways to get to. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think the hope is that it won't realize that that's even an opening and just keep on charging. All right. Well, I'm not hearing any opposition, so. Oric, why don't you give me a volley throw to fling that first bomb? A seven. Whew, okay. Just barely. Uh, that's just barely, yes. Yeah, that's just barely. Yeah, you want to move into danger? You want a poor shot where you do less damage? Or uh, do you want to have to use an extra bomb to get the first one to go off? Um, I don't know how much... Uh, let's just do say that I uh, had the mixture wrong and it's uh, less damage. So give me 2d8 minus a d6. Or, sorry, 2d4 minus a d6. And this ignores armor. I wonder if this works. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I rolled a 5 and minus a 6, so that was terrible. So Well... Luckily, this isn't just a damage bomb. It is also a scare the shit out of it bomb. Some of the eye stalks recoil back into the water. Uh, there are a lot of bubbles and a large slosh of water. Uh, a wave of it begins heading in your direction, followed shortly by the mass of the Otiug, which is coming out of the water towards you. Uh, now is the time to choose. Do you want to try to throw another bomb? Or do you want to 
haul ass. Uh, no, I want to make sure it's good and mad, so I'm doing another bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another volley. An 11. Very nice. Uh, so that's just straight up 2d4, right? Yes. Three damage. Oh. These d4s are not favoring me today. <laughs> Does not seem that way. So just remember you've got one bomb left. Okay. Uh, it has now left the water and is forcing its way into this walkway, or the, the entryway that you're at. Uh, if you want, you can turn around and run, or if you want to throw one more, you have to uh, be pretty dexterous and look for an opening, but uh, if you're willing to defy that kind of danger, you can give it a shot. Um, these aren't quite as effective as I was hoping, so I'm going to start moving down the tunnel. Okay. All right. So it is chasing you down the tunnel. Uh, are you going to cut left down the narrow passageway or keep No, definitely keep on going. Okay. It is using its barbed mouth tentacle things to push itself along. So, for a big creature, it is actually following you relatively closely. So, instead of being an ambush uh, as much um, as you had planned, uh, you get in there just a split second before it does. Okay. Uh, so before any of the people on the ground have a chance to react, it's gonna uh, it's gonna get to do a thing. But the two of you who are prepared up on the ledge, uh, you're far away to where it hasn't re rec uh, noticed you yet. So if you would like to do a thing, uh, feel free to act. Do it up, Sam. I should shoot at it, I guess. Test your special new arrow. How much light is in this cave? Very faint light from a crystal. I will use my special new arrow. Uh, what am I doing here? Did he say daylight or just no light? Light from a crystal. No, no, I'm saying the guy who sold you the uh, arrow, did he say no daylight or no light at all? Uh, if the light of the sun ever light touches the, the arrows, they yeah. turn to dust. Okay. Oh. Fire and just roll your damage. Oh, Okay. Uh, the, these you have to retrieve after battle, so you only get the one guaranteed hit. Nice. Very nice. Eight. Good arrow. Minus his armor. You hit it in the mouth. There is a gross choking sound as the big, fat, slimy tongue uh, spews blood and whatever else is in there all over the place. Uh, the floor around it becomes slick, and it is thrashing around. Hmm. Sam is pleased with her special new <laughs> arrow. <laughs> it grabs one of the short sword equipped uh, guardsmen by the foot and flings him against a wall. Uh, uh oh. Uh, Zarko, roll me a d6. A one. Luckily, he was bullied by his brothers as a kid, so he's used to being thrown <laughs> around. <laughs> so he uses the buckler to absorb the impact and uh, slides down the wall and is ready to attack. Wow. So Somebody else is free to do something? Yeah, Z Zarko would like to cast Magic Missile. Go for it. Thirteen. Hot damn. So 2d4 damage. Seven. Very nice. This thing is... Not doing so great, actually. <laughs> Must be the bombs. <laughs> yeah. The missiles impact pretty heavily on some of its uh, larger tentacles and put holes clean through them. So its bigger, angrier-looking mouths and the stalk with more eyes on it just kind of hang limply at its back. It's going to lean over and uh, with one of its last little bits of energy in that tentacle, it's going to spray uh, this thick stream of something uh, around the room. So, Sam and Zarko, uh, why don't you give me a defy danger dexterity to dodge whatever it is that it's flinging at you. And then somebody also, uh, I guess Auric, roll me uh, a defy danger plus one for the guardsman. An eight. Uh, dexterity. Okay. Oh, fuck. That's not fails. <laughs> uh, Sam, you have a choice. Either not the liquid itself, but something in the liquid makes contact with you, or you lose your footing from that ledge you're on. Sam loses her footing trying to avoid the liquid and the things inside of it. Roll me a d4 
for falling down. Uh, the guardsman manages to roll out of the way, but uh, slides on that gross slime and is on his back and kind of useless at the moment. He's cursing out loud. Uh, don't forget to take uh, your armor off of that to protect your butt from the fall. And Zarko, you managed to wizard your way out of the way. <laughs> okay. Sam, your armor is one. One, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to... It said you saw his tentacles flailing around? It still has a few. Okay. I... These are like the minor ones. I'm going to try to throw a dagger into one of them to disable another tentacle. Okay. An 11. Very nice. That definitely hits. So roll your damage. Three damage. Uh, that tentacle is sliced rather cleanly along what must have been a main artery or tendon or something because there's goo spraying out of it and it flops down to its side. It uses powerful limbs, or I guess two of them, to lunge forward and try to eat. I'm pointing at the screen with my finger and you guys can't see that. He's going to try to eat this guardsman right here. So he's going to lunge forward and let's say Zarko make me a plus one defy danger roll. Just 2d6 plus one? Yes. Nine. Nine. He gets most of the way out of the way, but it bites onto his leg. Uh, there are very, very, very many teeth on this thing. Uh, they're very hollow and needly, and some of them break off into his leg. Uh, there's a lot of screaming. And after some fighting, he's manages to get himself free. Uh, anyone want to do anything to him? Not the guy. The, <laughs> the <monster. laughs> I'll put him out of his misery. He's clearly done for. <laughs> select your pistol and then select your horse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to shoot at the monster again. I'm going to aim towards his where. I mean, it's. Oh, I'm gonna aim for his head. Okay. Um. That's where the sound is coming from, so... Oh, 11. 11, very nice. Uh, so roll your damage, and it's also stunned for a few moments as you hit it in where its tiny little brain is. I rolled all the damage. You did. Damn, woman. All the damage. Uh, it's stunned for way longer than a moment, because <laughs> that boy dead. Oh, yes. So... Apparently that shot to the brain uh, went all the way through, and there's a... <laughs> as it seems to almost deflate, its big fat rolls kind of settle, it seems to spread out a bit, and after several moments, some larval flies and Ew. fat maggots kind of come out of its mouth Ew. and crawl around the floor and spread away. So, this thing is dead. Nobody got hit by any of that gross bile stuff. Guardsman with the bastard sword is super embarrassed, and this other one is on the floor screaming in pain because, holy crap, I got a lot of teeth in my leg. Um, I'm going to knock him out with uh, my <laughs> poison of sleepness, and I'm going to see if Jock can help injure, help his leg at all. Whew, uh, well, I can try, but there are a lot of things in this leg. Do you have, uh, pull, pulley things? Um, do you have, okay, um, let me see how to phrase this. You are one of a particular set of skills who can acquire things, right? Yes. Do you have lockpicks? Certainly. Can I borrow them? Uh, if you clean them after you're done. <laughs> when we get to water, sure. Okay. Well, I know where there's some, well, I don't want to use that water up ahead, but different water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he uses the lockpicks to uh, sort of pinches them around the teeth and uses that to sort of wrench the stuff out so he can keep his hands away from whatever sort of spit is on these things and still keep a decent grip. Uh, after a while, he's able to pull these things out. He puts some ointment on the limb, bandages it up, and he says, I've done the best I can. I can't promise anything. Zarko's going to hold out a pouch and ask him to put the teeth in the pouch. You sure. could just harvest all the teeth you want. You guys are the boss. Sam, there is the matter of your arrow. Yes. Which is in that thing's tongue. Yes. And Auric, your blade has skidded off into the distance, but uh, aside from being covered in some goo, it's fine. Yeah, I'll retrieve. Is anything, like, is any of the 
the goo associated with this monster dangerous in any way? Are you asking them or me? You. I can't tell you. Can I roll the certain realities to find out if the goo is... Sure. Okay. Uh... That's wisdom. Wisdom. Oh. Twelve. Good. So you can ask three questions. Okay. Nice. Um, what should I be on the lookout for? The teeth. Okay. The creatures that live in the bodily fluids of this. Um, that's about it. Um, what here is not what it appears to be? Because now I'm curious. This guard's person over here, dressed like a guy? That's a girl. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Uh, is there anything besides my arrow in, in the monster that is useful or valuable to me? There could... I should have to tell you. Um, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a black market for his pancreas. <laughs> yes. There is something in there that is valuable to you. Okay. All right, then I'm going to go fetch the arrow, and I'm going to tell Max to sniff around to see if there is anything else that we should gather. Okay, very carefully, you're able to reach up, uh, pull the arrow out. Luckily, uh, with the way it embedded itself, you can sort of just reach over the lower jaw and pull it out. Uh, as you're doing that, you hear when the tongue kind of comes free from the arrow and slaps back down. It sounds like it's impacting on metal, maybe? Hmm. If you wanted to, to somehow defy a dangerous situation and get in there to uh, to extract what it is, you're able to do so. I will defy danger. That's strength, isn't it? Strength if you want to brute force your way into the mouth, or dexterity to avoid the pointy bits. I'm going to dexterity, um, dexterity, avoid only the pointy bits. Sam, if I could recommend, why don't you just knock the teeth out? Or just roll an 11. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm going to roll like shit. It's coming. <laughs> so with some, some clever maneuvering, you dodge the teeth, you move the tongue enough to reach under ugh, underneath, <laughs> and you find it feels like the arm armor from a piece, a suit of armor. It's like the whole metal tube your arm goes in below mm -hmm. the elbow. Uh, there is something gelatinous inside uh, when you pull it out, okay. but in the oversized mailed fist, there is uh, what remains of a leather pouch inside the the enclosed area. Is this like having a popcorn kernel stuck in your teeth? I Probably. guess. I will take the leather pouch. Uh, roll me 4d10. Oh, gosh. You got 31 gold coins in there. Awesome. I have 31 gold coins, guys. Just nobody ask where I got these from when I'm <laughs> spending them, please. <laughs> I'm just going to wash them off. It'll be fine. Cool. All right. I'm going to carefully extract myself from the vicinity of the monster. Good idea. Yeah, Zirkle will pull some more teeth out of that mouth if they'll come out. Yeah, absolutely. With enough prying, yeah. you can you can get those things out. It appears that uh, they were the... OTU functions a lot like sharks do, where the teeth just kind of keep rotating forward and they come out rel relatively easily? Yeah, it's not like I want every single tooth, but right. if there's some that'll come out without too much fighting. The ones at the front are relatively mm. easy to pull out. I'll just throw those in with the other teeth that get pulled out of the guy's leg. Let's say by the end you've got 20 teeth. Awesome. Is that enough teeth for you, weirdo? No. <laughs> If you all remember, the scouts are still in that entryway room. Uh, does anybody want to retrieve them, or do you want to call out for them, or... I'll send Max. They can, Max can go retrieve them. Fetch. Okay. <laughs> you hear some barking echoing off the cave walls, and a little while later, a bewildered group of scouts comes and wonders why they were escorted by a dog, <laughs> but uh, they see a large awful smelling dead thing in the middle of this room and the ones who are not furiously taking notes of all the crystals and stuff on the walls are trying not to throw up <laughs> the other ones are doing an admirable job of taking measurements and drawing pictures while gagging do we burn this thing is that a bad idea to burn this thing inside uh, of the you cave know, i was just wondering about that 
it's probably best not to light a large fire in an enclosed area. I guess. But it seems like leaving a rotting corpse in the middle of a room wouldn't be a like health hazard. Well, you know, we could ask Felix to take it outside if we want to go back to town. Well, I guess that's what these guys are here to figure out those kind of problems. So they now know it's here. <laughs> Just drag it outside, you know, set it on fire there. Yeah. Mm, whatever. I like the way you guys think. <laughs> that's called delegating. And that means you guys will be middle management in no time. <laughs> the two guardsmen that aren't uh, unconscious try to rig up some sort of carrying system for their unconscious friend and uh, they ask uh, one of them uh, looks over at let's say Sam since Sam's closest and he says Elf uh, are there any more any more dangers that we need to be here for or can we bring this guy back to town I think you could probably bring that guy back to town okay well uh, thanks I, I guess for making sure this didn't go worse We'll let the mayor know to expect you report back soon, I guess. Uh, this is this was not what I signed up for. Uh, bye. <laughs> hey, little man, at least now you have a fun story to tell. Yeah, f- fun. <laughs> so are you all going to continue onwards? Yeah, we'll escort the other group to the cave, pointing out all the interesting things. This is where the firebugs came out. I found some treasure here. The treasure was a trap, but guess who disarmed it? It was me. Well, <laughs> we will point out the other the trap that's still active. Oh, yeah. Because there's that the dangerous trap up here. Yeah, that's a little ways down. Uh, for the enormous pool of gross infected water, they're looking across at it and they say we definitely need to find something to do with this we can try digging down and see if we can make a big enough cavern to drain the water out we can make a bridge do you... what do you think what should we do um what kind of clearance is there over ahead uh this room's pretty large you probably got like 60 or 70 foot ceilings here can i cast detect magic to see if this water is like magic in any way. Sure. Why don't you roll it and tell me what sense you are attuning to magic. And God, I hope it's taste. Uh, no, I'll, I'll do sight. But I failed. You rolled a six. So take an experience. Uh, you get one experience for failing. Yeah. Which I think is the first one tonight, huh? I think so. Yeah, I think so. No. Uh, so, bad news is it is taste that is attuned to magic you are free to uh realize this and not taste the water but if you want answers that's how you're going to get them (laughs) yep Uh, zarko's just going to nod and lament everybody else about the conundrum (laughs) if only there was some way huh (laughs) build a bridge that's my suggestion (laughs) take notes okay build bridge I would be concerned over time how bad this water is going to get, so if you can find a way to drain it, that'd be my recommendation. Okay. Um, perhaps we could divert it somewhere. We'll we'll look at the possibilities for I that, I feel like I diverting it's probably going to be your best option. I mean, hopefully without this creature fouling it up, the water will perhaps not be so rank. One would hope but there must be something to purify it in the first place. Well, if we can meet up with our cleric, maybe. We've heard there are herbs that can be used to purify salt water. Perhaps something similar could be used for tainted... That's for another time. Uh, Let's continue onward. Okay. You just want to direct them down the main pathway or have them explore the side stuff? Or what's the the plan there? I... they... Should be able to explore the side pass on their own. We'll let them know what's down each way. Okay. Uh, when you tell them about the rubble, they murmur a little bit back and forth about uh, maybe breaking that wall down to see what's on the other side, and maybe it could lead to other pathways and uh, that sort of thing. Do it very carefully. The ceiling's been rigged to fall once. It could be even worse than we know. That was intention. Okay. No. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Definitely good to know. Thank you. And a little bit more travel, and it takes you guys to the exit of the under trails. Uh, all this is probably uh, with a stop, you know, to camp. But since you guys have all destroyed all the problems here, 
you get back to the exit of the Undertrails, the team that has been taking notes uh, thanks you all for your help. Uh, shakes, you know, they all shake each of your hands, uh, pat Max on the head, and head back to town. And uh, the rest of them continue on to follow you guys to First Conquest, which uh, should be about four days' travel. Woo! Luckily, the weather seems to have cleared up. It's still stupid cold outside, but there's no, you know, ridiculous uh, snow or anything. Uh, so, no, it's, it's six days, sorry. Yeah, six. So after six days more travel, you make it to First Conquest. Uh, the other team of scouts heads back, thanks you for your uh, assistance. They shake all of your hands, they pat Max on the head, they turn around and go. And uh, you are welcome back into the front gates of town. Awesome. Uh, it's probably getting on nightfall at this point. What do you guys want to do? Uh, most of the the buildings are shut down for the night just because of you know the time of year and the time of day. If you want, the guards can try and, and summon the Saint Sister or her attendant. Or you can wait till the morning. You can look for your friends. Um, it's really up to you. Did it, does the other scribe team still with us, or did they turn around after they, we made it here? They turn around once you got to the front gates. Okay, I just go to my own lodging. I could take Jock with me or something for now. Okay. I'll go home. Zarko, I assume you're going to take a napsy? Um, yeah. Unless uh, anybody has a suggestion for, like, whatever else we should see. Uh, Zarko is kind of curious to see if uh, the rest of the people that went west if they're back to town and whatnot. So, and it's kind of late. I mean, Zarko, if you want to chat now that we have a bit of free time. Oh, you now now you now you want to talk. Well, did you want to talk in front of a large group of random scribes? Cuz that sounds like a great idea. Let's go talk. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll I'll show Jock and Zarko back to wherever I'm holed up in this town. I don't remember what I said I had. Some sort of... Uh, I think it was like some little small lodging. Yeah. Um, and I'll show Jock where you can crash and we'll settle our accounts in the morning. And then I'll take Zarko aside to somewhere we can chat. So yeah, Zarko, um... You might know or might not know that I've been frequently bored on these trips and I was perusing through your wonderful public library and, well, I can honestly say what I read in there scared the shit out of me, but I would actually like to ask your help. I realize um, you have some pretty dangerous things in that library of yours and I happen to know that there's a new threat rising in First Conquest. Um, hey, Chris, did we give a name to the bandit gang? I don't believe we did. If you want to give them a name, you can, or I'll just come up with something and it's up to you. Uh, how about the Crimson Hand? I was about to say Black Hand, so that totally works. Okay. Um, there's this gang where I'm from called the Crimson Hand. Uh, they were responsible for the deaths of my parents. And I happen to know that they're moving into this town. And if they get a foothold here, it's going to mean things are going to be really bad real fast. Um, and I wanted to use you and maybe all of our friends to stop this threat and possibly lop its head off. That might be something that we don't need to have everybody involved in. But I happen to know that they're a pretty ruthless gang, and anyone that could take them down will make a name for themselves. And it's something that I wanted to talk to you about. You know, Auric, I don't know. You're... you're... You are a contradiction. You are very smart, and you are very stupid. I mean, yes, my books are very dangerous. That's why I don't let people read them. Okay? I, I mean, 
okay, I'm, I'm a little proud of you. I mean, honestly, that you, you, you looked at them and you understood any of them and you, you're still, you got all your teeth and your eyes. That's good. Uh, n- never mind. Um, okay. 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 Uh, Is that why you collect teeth all the time? I'm just, no, no. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So, so this, 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 uh, this crimson, crimson hand, uh, where, where they're from, where exactly originally? Uh, insert origin story here. I have no idea where I'm from. Actually, I'd have to figure out what town that was. I mean, so, so we, we if if we if we prevent them from establishing here, that doesn't stop them. No, that just hinders them, right? Right. I mean, yeah. The point is to go back and kill the leader in my hometown. Mm, mm, well, that that's that's a whole another kettle of fish. Well. Why, 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 why did you think, why, why were you looking at my books? That's the real question. I, think it, I mean, uh, if you wanted, if you wanted my help with this terrible gang of, of ne'er-do-wells, I mean, you could have just come out and asked us. You could, you could have asked Voltus. He would have been happy to smite these, uh, the, these bandits and murderers. Well, honestly, I didn't think that any of our group had a chance of doing that, even together, but... You know, some of the things I read and sort of expanded my mind, maybe in ways I didn't know could be expanded. But now I think we actually have a chance. Something that we actually can do. What exactly? When when you were reading these books, what was it exactly that gave you this inspiration? Oh, there was this one book. I don't remember any actual words in it. But after reading it, let's just say that I don't know if I was the same person. Does that make sense? It's kind of weird. But anyways, it the raw power that I felt contained in just a book, that's something I've never felt before and didn't know was possible, which gave me this idea now. Well, I th- I, I think you should... You definitely need to talk to the others about this because I don't think you and I alone could succeed at this venture. But I fully support you because as powerful as my books are, the individual has to be stronger in order to absorb the knowledge from them. And I don't think I don't think perhaps you've really learned the lessons from them that I have. But the fact that you're able to read them and still be here talking coherently to me that tells me that tells me you are an individual perhaps that is stronger of will than i first took you for and i apologize for judging you that way before but i i i I think i yes Mm. (laughs) i need to put locks on my books i think well i i appreciate the uh support and perhaps it will be something that I'll bring up next time we're all together again if it's all the same to you I'd appreciate you also maybe paying for my meals for the next few days because I don't know what happened exactly but uh, I'm I'm missing a lot of gold do you like goat because (laughs) I hear it's kind of expensive but maybe you like it. I don't. I don't think it's that expensive. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. All right. So, do you guys feel that it's adequately settled? For now, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess after that, does everybody go back to their separate places for the night? I stay where I am. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next morning, did you guys have like a designated meeting spot for where you were gonna like meet back up and look for people, or what's the uh, what's the plan? I'm sure we have some sort of normal hangout spot. Yeah. Top of the Empire State Building. Yes, that right there. <laughs> oh, the Fisherman's Inn. That place seems to be pretty good with you guys. The little tavern you went to. The one you didn't get in a huge fight outside of. <laughs> Definitely did not. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. As you're all making your way to the Fisherman's Inn, uh, you see a couple familiar faces. You see Voltus, you see Bill, you see Rook. And as you're making your way to go say hi to him, you notice it's oddly dark for the time of day that it's supposed to be. Uh, Looking up, you see that a 
gray cloud, almost perfect in smoothness, seems to be covering most of the entire sky. Uh, the sun is blocked out. There's very little light at all getting through. Um, and a, the, the, the cloud seems really low, maybe uh, only a few hundred feet up. And it begins to swirl and pull down into sort of a funnel. And that stops about a hundred feet above the town uh, as a roaring wind rips up. And out of the funnel, twelve figures emerge, suspended on glowing disks. They spread out almost to the perimeter of town, almost orbiting the walls, but about a hundred feet up. And then these beams of light shoot out of them, and where they meet in the middle, uh, a large face is projected. A hooded face. This should be good. Then it begins to speak. But we'll worry about what it says next time. What do the other group do? When the party is regathered, you'll, it'll, you'll, we'll, we'll, we'll pick back up with that. Um, but, uh, thank you everybody for downloading this. Wait, nope, nope, wait. Tally up no, stuff? We have to, you have to do the end of session stuff, yes. Yeah. Uh, hold on. End of session stuff. Choose one of your bonds that you feel is resolved, completely explored, or no longer relevant, or otherwise. Uh, well, I learned an important secret that Oric was keeping from me. That was that was one of my bonds. Yes. Um, do you want to turn that into a new bond? Well, uh, I mean, you did learn what Oric was keeping from you. Yeah, he wants me to help him, so I need to figure out how to phrase that, but... I'm going to help him with his quest. Oric was brave enough to confide in me, and I will offer him my aid. All right. Uh, make a note to yourself to give to, to... We need to flesh out a new bond before the next session. Okay. Anybody else feel like they have uh, one of their bonds resolved or anything? Um, I need to, I guess, adjust one of mine. Sure. Or, I guess, develop one of mine. Um which I guess I'll have to work on a little bit, but my bond with Auric, that Auric thinks I have his back. Um, I, through the journey through the caves and everything, um, Sam has definitely developed a respect for Auric and does have his back. Okay. So uh, I've come to respect Auric's actions and will protect him where I'm able. Yeah, that would work. Okay, then I also, I think my, the bond with Zarko is still developing so i think i'd rather develop the one i have with sam which was the one sam has my back when things go wrong i think several times sam has shown how capable she is mm -hmm. during this last session or two uh in the, in the caves how much she put down the the monster and then how she deftly handled the goat situation <laughs> <laughs> I will come to Sam for any livestock-related issues in the future. <laughs> I, I think uh, something more like uh, Sam has shown herself to be a capable uh, negotiator and fighter. Uh, she can be depended on for difficult things in the co to come, or something like that. About uh, she's shown herself to be a dependable ally. I'm trying to see if it's something you can act on. So maybe like I will seek out her guidance more often, or something. Sure, I can go with that. You cool with that, Sam? Yes. All right. Um, that, once the bonds have been updated, look at your alignment. Zarko, you definitely hit the shit out of that evil alignment, bro. <laughs> yeah. Use magic to cause terror and fear. Plus, plus, check, slash, yes. <laughs> Auric, avoid detection or infiltrate a location. You did manage to pickpocket that stuff. Yep. Sam, endanger yourself to combat an unnatural threat. I fell down the side of the cave and shot the monster. But that was because you <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> oh, I endangered myself. It doesn't say I had to endanger myself skillfully. <laughs> well, that's not unnatural either. It's it's totally uh, a natural thing spewing natural streams of maggots at you guys. No, I didn't. Gosh, dog it. The only thing that I maybe endangered myself with was the angry farmer, but he's not unnatural either. 
Oh, so <sighs> well, that th sucks. those things that he sprayed uh, were rot grubs, and if you had gotten oh. those on you, basically what they do is they burrow into your flesh real quick. <gasps> I'm so glad I fell down the cliff. Until you can get them out, uh, every day they burrow around and you take like oh, a D6 sick. of damage. Oh. The description on them says, they live in your skin, on your organ meat, or your eyeballs. Ew. They grow there Ew. and then, in a bloody and horrific display, burrow their way out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get this. So, oh, fuck. Where are we a okay. couple of years ago, I read this book, The Lost City of Z. Uh -huh. um, and the author, David Grant, he like traced the footsteps of uh, this like archaeologist guy mm -hmm. who was basically the inspiration for Indiana Jones. Sweet. And so it's through the Amazonian jungle. In the Amazon, there are flies that overnight will lay their eggs. In you, like in your knee joints and shit, and their maggots grow under your skin in your joints nah, and nah, get infected. Nah. And and no, right? So those things are fucking real. It's so <laughs> gross. Oh no! And like you can feel them. And I was like, I will never go into the jungle. The end. Yep. Okay. So back to the end of session stuff. <laughs> um. Also, Sam, if you ever want to change your alignment, uh, you're free to do so. Just you know, if, if you ever have feel, yeah, if you ever feel that we're not encountering as many unnatural threats as I thought we would. Well, usually at lower levels, you don't have as much of a chance of them. Yeah, like... but like, like this next session, maybe we will be. I mean, right? this whole face That's shadow exactly thing. what would happen to me. I would change my alignment, and then it'd be like spooks and ghouls galore. So regardless <laughs> of what it is or what happens, you need to just fire an arrow, whatever the fuck's going on up there, and you're gonna endanger yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so did we learn something new and important about the world as a party? The other group fucked up. <laughs> nah. Uh, <laughs> let's let's hold on to that for next time. Uh -oh. First off, that was an assumption you made. And second off, that was an assumption you should have made when they were out of eyesight of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, at the, to be fair, though, they're probably going to say the same thing about us, right? They're going to walk into but town. But they're wrong. <laughs> it's going to be one of those brilliant moments where like, there's two groups of three people and they just look at each other and they're both like, What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and like, what's the worst thing we did? I killed a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, you punched a goat and then broke its neck. <laughs> I, I set a dude on fire, kind of. You punched a goat he in the ass he twice and he broke its neck. <laughs> he thought he was on fire. I didn't really set him on fire. <laughs> You were trying to warm him up. It's not that big yeah. of a deal, right? Did we overcome a notable monster or enemy? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to say the Otug thing is notable enough. <laughs> uh, so you get one XP for that. Uh, did you loot a memorable treasure? Not that I know of. I don't think so. No, not really. Okay, so I'm getting at the end of that. Uh, three XP for Oric and Zarko. Uh, one for Sam? Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. That's about the way I roll. No, she should have at least two. Monster and uh, Bond. Well, the thing oh, is, yeah, that two. was that was your Bond that you had with her. Oh, she was just she's, setting up a new one? Now she's forming one based on you guys having enough interactions, but since she didn't already have that one, it doesn't give her the XP. I didn't know she didn't have one already. So, Zarko, you have the I'm one failure that. XP, the one evil mm -hmm. XP, and the one notable monster XP. Auric, you have the one Sam Bond XP. Did I also get one from the bond or yeah that's the, that's that's the auric xp oh okay who failed one zarko <clears throat> david oh okay so yeah. sorry zarko you got four i i okay yeah okay so you got one fail one auric one evil one notable auric you have one sam one neutral one notable and sam you have a notable all right now this is the real end of session uh, thank you, everybody, for downloading this latest episode of that D&D podcast. Join us for the next episode, where we will have both halves of our, I don't know what you call a duo with six people, our six-person party together. Sex check. <laughs> I'm not saying anything with the word sex in it, <laughs> near Bobby or Andrew. <laughs> no, she's right. It's a sex tet. Chris is just saying he's not going to say it around the other party members. Right. Because they have body brains. And we don't. We're all perfectly behaved little angels in this party. That's right. Goat killer. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta kill a goat if you want to eat it. I mean, it sounds like a are, bad are fable. Are you suggesting you it's get? better to like skin it alive and cut it off pieces as you want to eat? And then... Whoa, that's whoa. This is yeah, weird, whoa. Man. I, I wasn't gonna do that. You were... <laughs>
it's time for bed, you guys. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you everybody. Uh, stay tuned for our next episode next week. Same general time, same exact place. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, criticisms, anything like that, send them to that D podcast at gmail.com. And you can follow us on Twitter at that D D podcast, where I routinely post real dumb shit often because I get bored at work. So thanks and have a great night. Or day. Or whatever time it is, do you, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> That D&D podcast is released under Creative Commons 2.0, attribution, non-commercial, no derivative license. Tell your friends about us, don't chop out the good stuff, don't sell our work. The intro music is The Last Ones by Jazar, that's J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R, It can be found at the Free Music Archive. The outro music is Kopika, K-O-P-E-I-K-A, by Et, that's E-T underscore, and can also be found at the Free Music Archive. All of their copyrighted content is owned by their associated copyright holder.